everybody. It's still bundle week. Woo! <laughs> it's all I and look, I am not wearing my pajamas. I wore my pajamas pretty much all weekend for all the lives. It was very exciting. I decided to call them cozy lives just to make it easier on me. I'm going to mute myself and let Valerie introduce herself while I stop myself from talking in another place. Okay, well, hello, and thank you, Kathy, for having me on your show. My name is Chef Valerie Wilson. I'm also known as Chef Val, and my business name is MacroVal. And so Kathy put up my website, it's macroval.com. I have been teaching healthy, whole foods, vegan cooking classes for 26 years, since 1997. Wow. And before that, before that, I was in the food industry. I've been in the food industry since 1985. I went vegetarian in 1983, so I lived those times with you too. Well, back in 85, I was not into healthy cooking. My first job was at a delicatessen at 17 years old, and I quickly became the manager at 17 years old. So I worked there and I learned the basics of business and how to manage and a lot of food, you know, handling at that time. And then after that job, I was an assistant manager at a French bakery and restaurant where I learned how to make bread from scratch. And we had these to die for croissants. But, you know, this was all mainstream food. This is before I discovered healthy eating. And uh, then, uh, well, this is weird, but I stopped out of the food industry and I went and I had a house cleaning business for a couple of years. And then I had gotten to the point where I was kind of frustrated because I had eczema and I was trying to figure out why I had eczema. And I knew when I ate sugar, my skin would break out. And that's when I discovered this healthy way of eating healthy whole foods, going vegan. Now my introduction into it was through macrobiotics, which is why my website is macroval.com. So I started reading about how we're supposed to live close to nature. We're supposed to eat foods from nature, whole foods, not refined, not processed. And I was like, yes, this is the way we're supposed to eat. This completely makes sense to me. Now the macrobiotic side, for those who are listening that don't know, that incorporates like the energy of the food also kind of based in oriental medicine so i studied a lot about that also and then i found a macrobiotic cooking school here in michigan i'm in michigan and i went there and i worked for two years as her assistant to learn the particular type of cooking now that school is no longer in business anymore this was you know over 26 years ago and then I started a personal chef and then I started teaching cooking classes. And that's what I love teaching the cooking classes is so much fun. I'll tell you, your students are so are your best teachers because I just love my students. They ask me all these questions and most of the time I can answer them. But sometimes, you know, you get a question and you're like, that is a great question. Guess what? I don't have the answer to that. And then I go and do more research. Right. So I love my students. My students also give me suggestions like they they want to learn how to make this or they want to learn. Last year, one of my students said, I want to learn how to make vegan deviled eggs. I had never heard of that. I was like, what? This is a thing? I, didn't, I never even heard of it. So I had to go and figure out how to make vegan deviled eggs. And, and also last year, someone wanted me to do Chinese. So I did Chinese egg rolls and I did a tofu um patty with a peanut butter sauce and a sweet and sour sauce so they're always asking me to do things and then i go in the kitchen and i figure them out absolutely wow. that's one of the things that i love too and and marilyn who i put up a couple of comments from and i'll get into the intro in a minute that we're doing in the middle because why not marilyn who is the dehydrator queen she's in my classes and one of the things she's doing for the bundle for all the bundle lives she's watching as many as possible and she's saving them to a playlist so that she can access them and that's a brilliant idea not to mention she dehydrates pumpkin 
flush, grinds it into powder, and then rehydrates it into pumpkin puree. She does, like you do, you learn magical things from people, which is, it's what makes everything fun, because I like teaching the most, too. I like making crazy mad scientist recipes, too. And I think you like that. That's the part that you're talking about now, is kind of making something out of nothing. Oh, exactly. And that uh, dried pumpkin, that sounds amazing. In the fall time at the farmer's markets, I buy their pie pumpkins and I just go crazy. I bake them in the oven and they taste so sweet and so delicious. And then I usually, if I have flesh left over, put it in my freezer. So I have, you know, the fresh pumpkin flesh all year. That's one of my favorite things is baked pumpkin. I love that. Yeah. It's awesome. And when when Valerie's talking about pie pumpkins, those are the little ones that are super cute that now sometimes you see at regular grocery stores with like faces painted on them around Halloween. And I went to um, a market and they do like, you know, those big, Cheryl, what is, is it like a lawn wheelbarrow? But it's like, what's the thing that was that Perkins Orchard that I pulled to put the pumpkins in? It's like a big metal wagon, but it's like big, big, a yard cart is what it, and so you can fill it up with pumpkins for a hundred bucks and you get, they have uh, pack bags that you can fill up with groceries. They have oyster mushrooms and stuff and you get like a free apple cider, like a big thing of apple cider that they've pressed there. And they had things like Cinderella pumpkins and all these different really good pumpkins that were big. But the big orange pumpkins have like this much flesh and pie pumpkins ha are juicy with it. Mm hmm. Yes. Yeah. Farmers markets are amazing. I love them. Oh, and this isn't a farmers market, but it's actually this really cool black owned business. His grandfather started like at his house like this vegetable stand because he had a garden and now they've cleared out the whole backyard and they have it's huge it's huge and it's amazing and they're super friendly it's just i feel like we're really fortunate to have some cool things like that and also marilyn was saying she watched your your brown rice air fryer balls so i want to oh. hear a little bit about that yeah well thank you so what I contributed to the bundle are three cooking classes called whole grains for a whole healthy you, because I eat whole grains, three meals a day, seven days a week for over 26 years. I have more energy than my friends who are 10 years younger than me. So what I wanted to contribute to the bundle was answering all the questions and giving all the health benefits and also how to cook it. So the first one is brown rice with boiled vegetables. So to complement that, I'm going to make brown rice pudding here today. And I also submitted to Chef AJ a simple brown rice snack that you put into the air fryer. And it's kind of crispy on the outside. It's soft on the inside. It's quick and it's delicious and it's easy. And thank you so much for mentioning that, that you saw the um, video that uh, she put up. Yeah, it's really great to have so many different things. So if you're just tuning in, you're like, what's the bundle? I haven't been watching all these things. So like probably if you go on Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube, the past three days through the next week, all you're gonna see, not all, but you're gonna see a lot of whole food plant-based demos because we have the vegan health and weight loss bundle this week. It's, it's only on sale for 10 days, so it ends on Sunday. Once it's gone, it never comes back in its same format. So it's $49 for over 110 different individual products. And I think if you add it all up, it's like $6,000 plus. It's different than the 2022 bundle. So if you bought it, you're not getting anything that's duplicated at all. Everything's new. And what we're doing is kind of talking about our contributions and I'm trying to have people over to either have discussions on my show or show some things like Val is going to be doing the brown rice um, pudding, which I love rice pudding so much. And yeah, I'm going to get into that. Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, no, no, you're fine. 
it's going to happen. I inter I will interrupt you too, and I apologize in advance. But I think what we're going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and put Val full screen and let her make her rice pudding. All right. So before I do that, like you started mentioning the bundle, and I totally forgot this, but I had made this plate up. So this is the brown rice and the boiled mm -hmm. vegetables. Oh, that looks good. Do you make it in the same thing or do you make them separate? You make them separate. Okay. Yeah. They look and, awesome. Thanks. Chef Julia Dunaway has contributed to the bundle her whole cookbook that is Japanese cooking. And Japanese cooking uses a lot of ingredients that Macrobotics does. So, you know, miso and tofu and uh, lots of ingredients like that. So I actually interviewed Julia on my radio show, Real Food with Chef Val. We had such a great conversation. If you want to hear that radio show, macroval.com, it says, listen to Val's radio show. You can pull it up and listen to it. And I made Chef Julia's kabocha squash bread. Oh, Only that I turned delicious. Them. What, what is the, the brown stuff? Is it like a red bean paste or something, or is it just? Yeah, so I, her recipe in her cookbook is to put it in a loaf pan and you make a bread. I decided to do muffins with her recipe. And then I took my homemade blueberry jam oh. and I put the jam in the middle of the muffins. Nice, that looks delicious. I love Chef Julia and she's on the show tomorrow. She's on my show. Oh, I have to catch that, 12 o'clock? I think tomorrow I'm at one and five. They're all different all week long. Today is you at noon and then Kathy at six and we're gonna talk about meal planning. But yeah, don't ask wonderful. me anything past tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, as long as I'm doing a couple of things tomorrow too, but I'll definitely catch Chef Julia. All right, so let's make some brown rice pudding. Okay, so the first thing you got to do is you have to cook your brown rice, which I go over how to cook brown rice in the bundle and everything. And unless somebody says in the comments they want me to go through it, I'm just going to kind of go with the cooked brown rice. Kathy, do you know what is more delicious or healthier for you than a beautiful, warm pot of brown rice? I do. I love brown rice. Like, I really love it. But there's got to be something. But a combination no, this, of it with vegetables and some tofu would be my answer. No, it's a trick question. The answer is nothing. <laughs> It's awesome. And do you cook, you cook all your grains on the stove top? Which I is, do. Go on. Yeah, I do oh. cook them on the stove top, either pot boiled or pressure cooked. I actually prefer pot boiled, but my mom has a, has a rice cooker and she cooks her brown rice in a rice cooker. So I tell everybody, you know what, no matter how you cook your brown rice, just cook it and eat it. Cause then you're going to get all the health benefits of it. Right. Absolutely. I'm, I'm on that team too. I love appliances. Like I cook it sometimes in my instant pot. I have a rice cooker and I've gotten spoiled because I haven't cooked it on the stove in so long that it's become harder for me than it used to be. It used to be, I didn't have any of this stuff. Do you have any, any tips about cooking perfect rice on the stove that you could just kind of give us? Oh yeah. And in fact, I'll get to it when I cook the rice pudding, but if you cook your brown rice or other whole grains on your stove, this is what's called a flame tamer or a flame diffuser. This is metal. This is wood and it sits on the stove. The heat is underneath here and you put your pot up here and this evenly disperses the heat to the pot. So you don't accidentally scorch or burn your whole grains. And this makes your pot of whole grains perfect every single time. It's Does that work on an electric stove as well as a gas stove or do you just not need it for an electric stove? Oh no, when I, I was in my apartment for over 10 years before I moved into my home and I had an electric stove in my apartment, I used that all the time. Now I have a gas, I use it all the time. Yeah, Perfect. definitely. Perfect, because I've seen them before, I've never used one and I always thought, it was a gas stove thing. So that's an awesome tip. Thank you so much. Yeah, when I personal chef for people and go into their houses, everybody's stove is different. I can't tell you how many times, you know, you're in someone's house and you're cooking away and you want to impress them. And 
you accidentally burn the whole grain because you don't have one of these, you know? So then I, I always take this with me now. I take it with me no matter where I go to make sure if I'm going to cook at someone's house, I've got to have that, you know, really makes a difference. All right, so let's make our brown rice pudding. First of all, I made this beautiful pot of whole grain brown rice before the class. Now I'm going with short grain brown rice because I like the flavor and the texture of short grain so much better. You can make your rice pudding with long grain rice perfectly fine, okay? Now from so, macrobiotic stuff, I, I, I don't know a lot. So let's, let's preface it with that. But I, I, when I used to read about some of it, they would talk about using short grain brown rice in the winters and longer grain in the summer. Do you find that yes. that's necessary or are you just, you're like, I love short grain brown rice because I would think it would make the rice pudding a lot creamier the same way a Boreo rice makes risotto creamy, the shorter grain. The shorter grain will make your rice pudding creamier. And yes, that's wonderful you mentioned that. So it has to do with the yin and the yang energy. So short grain brown rice is smaller and compact. So it's more yang. So it's going to impart heat into your body. That's why it's called the signature brown rice for wintertime is short grain. The long grain rice is long and expansive. That's what we classify as yin. It's more cooling to the body. So it makes sense that you would eat it in the summertime. Now I'm somebody who loves short grain, but in the summertime, I will take the long grain rice and that's when I make my salads, you know, cook the long grain rice and then mix, you know, lettuce and other things with it. And so you make the long grain rice salads in the summertime more so. But that doesn't mean you can't eat long grain in the winter and you can't eat short grain in the summer. It's just the majority of what you eat in the wintertime, you want to eat warming foods. And in the summer, the majority of food, you want to eat cooling foods especially I'm in Michigan. So, you know, we have freezing cold winters and we have nice and warm summers. So it does make more of a difference when you live in a temperate zone with the different temperatures too. Yes. That makes sense. And I do have one question. Um, one Mary two and three and Marilyn both are saying, um, does the diffuser work on an induction stove? That's a good question. Induct I know it works on a glass top. It does. An induction stove is where you have to have the special pots and pans that go on top of it. I have never cooked on an induction stove, I have to admit. So, well, I that, have an induction burner that I use for demos because I, I put it over on my counter. So if I get one of those and, and Chef Al, would you mind after the show, maybe sending me a link on Amazon to one of your favorites or something like that. So I can make sure I get a good one and I, that I recommend the correct one. And then I'll test it out and I'll let us all know. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. And then I'll have the answer too. <laughs> yeah. We win together. All right. So we're going to measure out four cups of brown rice. And this is a, just a little cooking tip for you. Put a little bit of water in the measuring cup. You're going to measure the brown rice. So then the brown rice won't stick to the measuring cup. I do the same thing with my rice paddle. Just dip it in water. It's just so that the brown rice doesn't stick to whatever you're using. And then I'm going to scoop out four cups of brown rice here. I made more than four cups of brown rice because I want to have brown rice later. So, but we start with four cups of brown rice. I love the batch cooking of grains and beans and, and like that. And so let's say I even made this just for the brown rice. I would double how much I was making. And at worst case scenario, I'd put that extra rice in the freezer and serving. So I'd have it for like, I don't feel good days. Yeah, you know, it's so interesting batch cooking. So for 26 years, I've been teaching cooking class. I've always taught batch cooking, make big quantities of this, put it in your fridge, put it in fridge. I never called it batch cooking because I didn't have a name for it. That was just always what I taught. And now fast forward, people are calling it batch cooking. It's kind of, I've been doing that for years. So it's interesting. All right. Now we're going to use some non-dairy beverages. And I know everybody has their favorite. So you could use whatever kind you want. I like the rice beverage. So I have a cup and a half of the rice beverage. We're going to put that in there. And you, you know what? Do you make in your fact, own or do you buy it? 
No, I, I don't have time to make my own, so I buy it. Yeah. So also in my recipes, I don't use the word milk. I always put beverage because you're not supposed to say milk unless it comes from a cow. So even in my cookbooks, I say rice beverage or oat beverage or soy beverage, but that's, that's what it's indicating. Now, this one here is one of my favorites of the oat. It's organic. And this, this to me is sweet. This is a sweetener to me, which is why I use one and a half of the rice, which has a nice sweetness too, but this one is more sweet. And then I add, I think it's, um, half a cup or a quarter, it's a half a cup. Yep, half a cup of the rice. Oh, I'm sorry, half a cup of the oat. And I know a lot of people make oat um, themselves at home. I and do, that and one of the reasons the oat milks in cartons and Oatly is sweet, it tastes sweet is they use an enzyme called amylase to make it less slimy, but that also um, produces some sugars in it. So it may or may not be in the ingredients, but it could be treated with an enzyme. Typically, commercial ones are to make it not slimy. Oh, I'll have to I'll have to check in that and see What's, because I always I always teach and make sure always read the ingredients because you don't want the added sweetener in any of the beverages that you're buying. And what's the sugar on it? Is it like per cup, like seven grams? It's 17 grams of sugar for one cup. Oh, wow. That's even more. So I don't know if they're, but it just has oats and water as the ingredients. Yes. Yeah. So they, they've got to be using the enzyme because it does create sugars. For so sure. you have to. You have to be careful though too of reading the label on how many grams of sugar there is because that's deceptive so for instance in i'm going to tell you about brown rice syrup here in just a second but let me give you an example brown rice syrup is made from whole organic brown rice which is a complex carbohydrate it will never spike your blood sugar level ever ever but if you pick up the label and you turn it around and you read how many grams of sugar in it it's high in sugar because it's a carbohydrate now you could pick up a bag of crappy cookies that have, you know, fruit juice sweetened or even sugar in it. And there could possibly be less grams of sugar in it, but that sugar is going to spike your blood sugar level. It's going to wreak havoc with every organ in your body where brown rice syrup will never do that. But according to the label, the grams of sugar is higher. So it's really important. The source of where does the sugar come from? Like date sugar. Date sugar has fiber and vitamins and minerals, so it's not going to react on your body the same way as white refined sugar. But you could go into a store and buy, find like a protein bar that has white sugar in it that might have less grams of sugar than something that's made with date sugar. But we know that the date sugar is better for us because it has vitamins and minerals and nutrients, and white refined sugar is completely devoid of all that. In fact, white sugar is a chemical. So we need to stay away from that at all costs. So the grams of sugar can be deceptive on a label. It, you have to look where the product comes from. You know, if it comes from a whole grain, it's going to have sugar. And also, too, they just the FDA just recently did this. The FDA made these rules and regulations that they had to change the labeling on food. So this is Suzanne's brown rice syrup. I've been using this for over 26 years. It's my favorite. Again, it's made from whole brown rice. And if you look back here on the label, just recently, they had to add to the label added sugars. So it says includes 12 grams of added sugar. And I called the company and I said, what is this? Actually, one of my students saw it and they said, what is this? And I called the company. I said, why does it have 12 grams of added sugar? Did you add anything? Did you change your recipe? And they said, no. It is still 100% brown rice. It's the exact same thing. The FDA now makes every single label have to say include so many grams of added sugar to make people more confused, right? Because they'll look at this and they'll go, added sugar? What added sugar is in this? So if you're at the store or even the products in your house, pick it up and read the label. And if it's a new product, you'll see that it says includes added sugar but there's, there's no added sugar. It's just very confusing. So it makes more confusing for people to try and buy a healthy sweetener as opposed to something that's made with white sugar. 
So that's just something I wanted to share with you. Okay, so the brown rice syrup, we are going to put a quarter cup. And I'll tell you a little bit more about it here too, but I want to get this in here. Quarter cup. See how it's sticky? It's thick and sticky, but it's absolutely delicious. So it's made from whole brown rice that has been cooked down. They do add a particular enzyme to it to break down the starches of the brown rice so that it becomes thick and sticky and delicious. But as I said, it comes from whole brown rice. So all the vitamins and minerals, antioxidants that are in brown rice is in brown rice syrup. The sugar that's in brown rice syrup is maltose, M-A-L-T-O-S-E. Maltose will never spike your blood sugar level. Maltose comes from whole grains. So even people who are diabetic can handle brown rice syrup. Now, again, I get Suzanne's because it's top of the line, best quality. I love it. You may find Lundberg and you may find Sweet Cloud brown rice syrup. Those are also very good brown rice syrups. This is just my favorite because of the flavor and it's just so delicious. I use brown rice syrup to make all my desserts, cakes, cookies, everything and anything. Um, in fact, this is my latest cookbook, Simply Healthy Scrumptious Desserts, all made with brown rice syrup. And in the introduction of my cookbook, I go through all the different sweeteners too, the ones that are good and the ones that are bad, you know? So I go through the brown rice syrup, I go through um, date sugar, uh, and then I go into the ones that are really bad, like aspartame and saccharin and all the really bad ones. It's all in the introduction here. All right, let's see. We've got the beverages. We've got the rice. We've got the brown rice syrup. And then we need cinnamon, allspice, cloves, and nutmeg. So we have a half of a teaspoon of cinnamon, which is one of humanity's oldest spices. We have a pinch of allspice pinch of clove and a pinch of nutmeg. And I don't know if people know what a pinch is. This is how I measure a pinch. I just go like this and I just shake and I get like a pinch. That's a pinch of nutmeg. Nutmeg has anti-inflammatory properties. They've even used nutmeg to help people that have um, tooth pain. And allspice, a lot of people think allspice is like a combination of a bunch of different spices, which is why it's called allspice, but it's not. Allspice is a plant all by itself. Allspice is one of my favorite spices. I love using that one a lot. All right, so that's it. And then you put the lid on it and you let it cook for about 20 minutes until the rice kind of gets even softer. It absorbs some of the liquid. And then I add my raisins. You can add the raisins now, or you can add them later. If you add them now, they tend to get even more soft. Uh, so it's so, up to you. So if you now, had old like ones, that <laughs> add it. Sometimes I have old ones that are in the can, because I have a big pantry. So if they seemed a little bit tough, Adding them in before would probably be a good idea, but if they're fresh and nice and luscious, adding them later, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, good tip. Yeah, if you've got old ones, make some rice pudding. All right, so this is what I'm going to put my flame tamer on there now. And Joanne was saying if it doesn't ha have a mat, if a magnet doesn't stick to the diffuser, then it won't work on an induction burner. So we may not have to try that experiment. But I'll Good check point. and see if there is an infuser, infuser or something like it for an induction stove. Yeah, that's a good point. So this is what it looks like while it's cooking. It's just kind of simmering. It looks yummy. All right, so... Um, a little preview like what I'm gonna what I teach in the bundle about brown rice because some people I don't think realize the tremendous health benefits of brown rice and so I teach a lot about the antioxidants that are in brown rice 
like coenzyme Q10, vitamin E, and those help fight off diseases. But there's something in brown rice called IP6. And you can even go into a health food store and you can find a supplement bottle that's labeled IP6. And it says anti-cancer supplement that is made directly from brown rice. It's called IP6 and it's an anti-cancer supplement and you find it in brown rice. Brown rice is a category called whole grains or complex carbohydrates. So I know a lot of people are afraid of simple carbohydrates. This is completely different. Complex carbohydrates and whole grains give your body energy because they digest very slowly and they release glucose very slowly into your system, which gives you long, sustainable energy to last throughout the day. Now, if you eat simple carbohydrates like white sugar, which we don't want to eat, but that will release glucose super fast, right? And then you get like this spike and then you crash and burn. And that's what happens when you eat simple carbohydrates. You like crash and you burn, which also creates very chaotic energy where whole grains like brown rice give you nice, sustainable, long energy like this. And it's a calming energy also when you eat the whole grains. Sorry about that. My phone's ringing. I don't know why. We're on a live. It's exciting. Yeah. So also too, your brain is like this big glucose monster. Your brain wants glucose all the time. Your brain is fed on glucose. So if you're eating whole grains on a regular basis, your brain is getting fed glucose slow and steady. And your brain is like, I'm happy. I'm functioning properly. I can handle stress. You know, I'm really, you know, functioning well. But if you eat simple carbohydrates and that, you know, the, the, the spike of glucose goes into your brain, it goes, and then you can kind of go, oh my gosh, oh, I can't handle anything. I'm, I, I'm so upset. I can't handle anything. It's like a chaotic energy where whole grains, nice and calm and steady, and your brain is very happy. And then you, your overall energy is peaceful and happy too. That's another reason why whole grains, when I sit down to eat, the largest portion on my plate is whole grains, always. I have a lot of vegetables, but always on my plate, it's mostly whole grains. And that kind of comes from the whole macrobiotic thing. When I lived in New York, I don't know, was it early 90s? There were a couple of macrobiotic places I would go to eat, which I loved it because they'd have these giant rice cookers. And actually here, I'll switch us both to both of us, these giant rice cookers, and they would have all different kinds of grains and little beans or lentils, and you'd get scoops of that, and that would be like a big scoop. And then you could pick some different vegetables and greens. And again, from the limited amount that I know about macrobiotics, you know way, way more than me, it always seemed to be very grain heavy and then adding in these lovely vegetables. Yes. Yeah. But I, I do eat a lot of vegetables too, but yes. And, and all of our ancestors, no matter where you came from, had a diet based in some type of whole grain. That's what our ancestors ate and they were healthy enough to survive and we're still here. Right? So they must've known something that they, you know, did that. So. That's awesome. Um, do you have anything that is maybe, so you talked about Chef Julia, you liked her stuff in the bundle. Is there any other bundle pieces that you've played with? And also if you're watching um, and you have something that you've already looked at in the bundle you wanna to recommend to other people, go ahead and put in the comments and I'll share. Cause I love Chef Julia too and I love Japanese food so much. Yeah, and or if anybody's watching has any questions, I can answer questions. So first of all, the thing that I was most excited about was the yoga certification course. I think her name is Angelica. I'm going to interview her on my radio show Thursday because I've been doing yoga for about 25 years. And but this is a certification course. So she I can go through this and then I'll be certified to teach yoga. I've already started watching like the first couple courses that she has. That's amazing to have that in the bundle. 
I agree. And just again, for people who don't already know, like the plant-based doctors that you're familiar with are in the bundle with different classes and talks and goodies. There's exercise, there's the yoga teacher training, there's raw food recipes, cooked food recipes. Um, I know that Raw Chef Yin has Chinese raw food, which I just downloaded to look at because I was like, hmm, I want to see what that's about. It, it's just kind of amazing the variety. You think that it's just a few little ebooks, but it's not. I promise you. Another thing that's in there is a book called Heal and Prevent Autism by Karen Ramsey about how eating a whole food, plant-based vegan diet can help with people with autism. I was like, when I saw that, I was so excited. I started reading that. I mean, that's an incredible source. And she is, I looked her up. She's a world renowned lecturer. She travels all over the world and her book is in the bundle. It's, that's pretty amazing. It is really amazing. So whatever you're looking at now or where you, where you are now, just pick out, don't overwhelm yourself. Don't go, I'm gonna read three a day for the whole month or something like that. You know, some of these, like mine has four classes. So it's four two to three hour video cooking classes with PDF downloads. You don't have to do them all now. What happens is you'll go and sign up before the year's over, because you'll have it for that amount of time. Then once you've signed up for my class, you have it as long as I have classes up. So you've got years to go through that. So maybe one time if you are interested, because I have air frying, instant pot slow cooking, and I do a dehydrator powder class where I make like vegetable bouillon with, imagine, vegetables. And not any of the weird stuff that you see in the cubes, right? No malodextrin or oil or any of that stuff. Um, Real is asking, can you repeat how much liquid in the pudding, just the plant beverages? Yes, it's one and a half cups of the rice and one half cup of the oat. So that would be two cups all together. And you could use your favorite. You don't have to do a combo. I like doing combos, but you could just do two cups of your favorites, two cups all together. Mm -hmm. And I often just use whatever milk I've made. So I'm, I'm reviewing a lot of milk makers. So I'm making all the milks. <laughs> <laughs> this morning I made a pistachio latte with pistachios and dates. It was really good. Yeah. Have you done soy milk yet? I've done soy milk before. I'm kind of trying to get a lot of the nuts and grains and seeds done. Um, Cause I had the soy Bella for a long time and I've made soy with it. I usually, even in the soy Bella, I make it with the soy, soak the soybeans, make it in the cycle. And then I still cook it 10 more minutes in the Instant Pot after I strain it. What about you? No, it, I've always wanted to make soy milk from scratch, but I haven't. Like I teach cooking classes almost every single week. And uh, I also have customers that I cook for and I'm constantly in the kitchen creating new recipes. So sometimes I don't have time for all the things I wanna do. Now there is a local place here in Michigan that makes tofu from scratch, oh, which is the best tofu. And I buy it by the case from him. And he said to me that he sells a lot of soy milk. And I was like, oh, interesting. He said, do you want to taste some? So he actually gave me some for free. It was delicious. And he told me, just like you were telling me about the oat beverage, all soy beverages that are out there even like Eden Organic is a really good one. It's just soybeans, that's it. But they add some type of coagulant or something in there to have it have a longer shelf life. And it also takes some of that intense soy flavor out. Mm -hmm. So when I tasted this fresh soy milk that he made from making tofu, it was like the flavor was so much stronger. Now, some people would be turned off for that. I wasn't because I love tofu, but the flavor was so fresh and it was so much stronger from the fresh soy milk, you know? So when you make the soy milk, when you get to that, you're going to love the flavor. It's amazing. It, it's really fun. And actually both Gina and Linda want to know um, where you can buy that tofu in Michigan. Gina lives in Michigan. 
So it's Royal Oak. I don't know if you can buy it directly from the company because I'm a business, but okay. So in Ferndale, there's the natural food patch and they sell this tofu and there's a little picture of a panda bear on it. It doesn't, it just says firm organic tofu. I call it panda bear tofu because there's a little picture of the panda bear. If they're in Michigan, they might've seen it. If again, they sell it at the Ferndale store. I think there's a health food store in Royal Oak too. Gina says uh, she lives in Royal Oak. Yeah, they make it. They make it right there in Royal Oak. But again, you know, I, because I'm a business, I go directly for the company. I think you have to buy it from a store. So the natural food patch in Ferndale has it. And there's a health food store in downtown Royal Oak. If she lives in Royal Oak, she probably can think of the name. I can't think of the name, but there, those are two stores that carry it. Yeah, fresh tofu made right in Royal Oak. Oh, that's awesome. Um, we have a lot of Asian markets and Indian markets in the area. So I can get fresh tofu on the weekends. And we actually have a Vietnamese restaurant that only makes their vegetarian plate twice a week on Wednesdays and Saturdays because that's the only time they can get fresh tofu. And it's, it's really amazing. It's not whole food plant-based, but it's vegan and it's delicious. Yeah, so you do have to be careful in those oriental stores. I go to an oriental store in Novi to get burdock root and lotus root. But while I'm there, I just start picking up products and reading it. And one of the products that I use is umeboshi plum paste, mm -hmm. which Chef Julie and I were talking about. It's one of my favorite things. And I picked it up in this oriental store and there was high fructose corn syrup in it. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh no. And then I've also picked up miso in the Oriental store and there's sugar in it. Yeah, you have to oh, read the no. labels carefully. There is, I'm noticing many more organic products popping up in the Asian market and the Indian markets. It's not all organic, but like I'm always shocked because now at the in, a small Indian market I go to has a little section of all organic spices. But yes, you definitely have to read because while if you've come up kind of seeing things happen in the health food store, so like Whole Foods and other places have had macrobiotic brands of like umabashi plum paste or miso. And so you probably like I was trained for a while, just, oh, that's automatically perfectly healthy. But in a normal person's life in China, they have the equivalent of a sad diet they just happen to use some of these ingredients in it as well it's it's very interesting to think of it that way yeah i usually get my miso and my ume stuff um imported from japan it's a matuko brand mm. and that's the highest best quality like they've been making the umeboshi like for generations like in the same family and it's just amazing the flavor is awesome I love sushi rolls with the pickled plum paste. It's so I just I just I just posted on my YouTube channel how to make nori rolls with the umeboshi plum paste. It's uh, Chef Valerie Wilson on YouTube. Uh, okay. If anybody wants to check it out, you guys should check it out because we'll probably do another sushi class. I've done one a year so far, and for something else, for a raw thing, I made cauliflower rice sushi, which was beautiful, but it was. I couldn't eat as much cauliflower rice sushi as I could brown rice sushi. It was a little harder on the tum-tum, some raw. I, if I did it again, I would lightly saute it instead of making it traditionally raw. I got, I got, um, it's, it's, it's a lot of cauliflower for some. Yes. Time. And I, I mean, I, you know, if, I think everybody's different. And if the raw food lifestyle works for you, bless you. But in, in my cooking and everything, I teach you should never eat cauliflower raw. It has a high sulfur content and it's hard to digest. So sauteing it or lightly steaming it will make it more digestible, definitely. A little, little nicer on your stomach, right? Right, and, see, and I'm definitely, well, I love salads and raw soups and there's a lot of things I like. Um, the raw sushi I made because I was asked to teach a raw food sushi class and I didn't know if I could get away with sauteing it, but I was told by a husband and wife I was not allowed to bring the leftover cauliflower sushi to them again because of okay. 
after effects. How I can't say it any nicer, but I think right. I think it was a very gassy household for a couple of days. Oh yes, definitely. <laughs> I understand. Yes. And how hey, do you want? Oh, yes, I want to hear. Do you want to hear about my greatest success story? Of course. Well, it's my dad. So I switched over and started eating healthy and everything. You know, I've been teaching for 26 years. So I kind of switched over about 30 years ago because there was like a few years where I wasn't teaching. And so it was about 20 years ago, my dad announces to the family that he has a high PSA count. Now he didn't say he had prostate cancer at this time. He just said the doctor was concerned and he had a high PSA. And so I said to my parents, do you want me to help you? I will teach you how to cook this way. I will help you. And they said, yes. So I started working with my parents and teaching them. And my dad's doctor said, when he told him that's this is what he's going to do. Well, you can do that, but it won't make any difference whatsoever. That's what is my doc, you know, the doctor told my dad. So my dad had no medical procedures, no medicine. It was all food. It was all food. He completely changed his diet the miso soup, the brown rice, naturally fermented food. And it took years, don't get me wrong. The body heals itself in its own time, right? So he also had um, high blood pressure and he kept asking me, how come my high blood pressure isn't coming down? How come?" I said, well, dad, you know, the body has to heal itself in its slow way, but eventually it did. And, you know, looking back, we should have wrote down more information like how long did it take i can't remember you know it was probably two years or so but his psa came down his doctor was completely surprised and so he's doing much better now that's my great success story and then fast forward till about three years ago my dad developed meniere's disease meniere's disease is an inner ear problem where you get dizzy. I think that it was brought on when he fell off a ladder a couple years before that. He fell off a ladder and hit his head. And that's sometimes why Meniere's comes up. And so my dad is a very healthy guy, you know, and he does stuff, but he would be out doing stuff and he would get dizzy and he would almost fall, you know. And I, so once again, I had to do all this research about Meniere's disease because, you know, and I did a lot of research and I put him very very strict in fact the first week all you can eat is millet and vegetables nothing else because we had to do the elimination diet right to figure out what was triggering it and so i worked very diligently with my dad he doesn't have any dizzy spells anymore i mean that is the power of food food is medicine you know when you eat this healthy whole food from mother earth and you don't eat sugar or refined food you strengthen the body and the body can heal itself, but you have to, you have to work with it. You have to eat the healthy whole food. You know, you really have to, you have to be dedicated to it, but that's my greatest success story is uh, helping my dad and he overcome both those health challenges. That's awesome. That's, that's really lovely to hear. And I think it's also nice to think about the fact that, even while you're eating these healthy foods. So I think part of the world is kind of like, oh, you're eating healthy, but they forget about all the herbs and spices and beautiful flavors that we get to incorporate in. And pretty much it's easy to swap out for things that you might be missing as well. Like brown rice is always the first swap I make for people. Or, you know, if, if we do whole wheat pasta, little things like that so people can still have what they're used to and then slowly work their way up so no matter where you are in the i'm thinking of going vegan or i'm thinking of eating super super healthy or somewhere in between you still can add a few of these things so easily yeah i'm glad you mentioned that because when i work with someone i do also do counseling usually the first thing i tell them to do is just eat brown rice like you do, because it's such an easy thing to do. You can just cook it up and just start eating it. One thing that I have found for people who are 
reluctant to try brown rice because they, you know, it looks different to them. It, the texture's different to them. And, and sometimes it depends on the age or the persnicketiness of the person is that I will cook brown rice a little bit softer, a little bit longer just to kind of get people in. Now, if you have someone who has a texture issue, that could also bother them. But I found a lot of times it also helps with people who aren't eating much fiber. It breaks it down a little bit more for them. I don't know if you, like, I could eat kanji every day. Like, I love some kanji. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I eat, you know what, for some reason, my voice is echoing back to me. And it just started. It wasn't doing it through the whole show. And now it's echoing back to me. Okay, now it stopped. It's gone. Thank you. Uh, you know what? Sometimes you start thinking of stuff that you never even bother to think of because I started thinking about this a while ago. I think I eat some form of brown rice every single day. It may not be the whole grain brown rice. It may be brown rice pasta. It may be mochi. It may be some rice milk or something like that. But every day. I eat some type of brown rice. Yeah. That's awesome. So how much longer do we have on the rice pudding for cooking? And like, what is, are you cooking it a certain amount of time or until it gets a certain texture? Yeah, about 20 minutes. And I've been looking at the clock. Yeah, we're almost there. It's almost, it's almost perfect texture. Hey, I wanted to um, do something a little fancy. Well, it's not okay. fancy, but. This is extra for people who are watching the video, so they get a bonus. I'm going to put a little bit of grated ginger into the rice pudding. And I don't know if people have, um, they buy fresh ginger, but I love fresh ginger. If you buy fresh ginger, put it in a paper bag to store it in the fridge. Don't put it in a plastic bag. A plastic bag will build condensation. A paper bag will absorb the condensation so that your ginger stays fresh in the fridge for a while. This is a stainless steel grater. This is what I use to grate the ginger on. Fresh ginger has this beautiful pungent flavor that's awesome. Ginger is really high in anti-inflammatory properties. Uh, it's in the same family as turmeric. And turmeric is the strongest anti-inflammatory food on the planet. So ginger comes next. Ginger also helps with an upset stomach and can help, you know, if you ever have um, motion sickness. So you just go back and forth on the grater. You can see me, right? Yep, go back and forth on the grater like this. Yeah, we can see you perfectly. Great. This is where you, you use your muscles and you get strong in the kitchen. You know, when you're working in the kitchen and you're cooking, you're doing all kinds of exercises, you know, creating strong muscles by grating your ginger like so. So I'm going to do probably like two teaspoons. Yep, two teaspoons. You don't need more than that. If you put more than two teaspoons into this pot of... Um, rice pudding, I think it would be a little pungent, a little strong, because ginger is pungent to the flavor, All right? Here, let's go back to the pot of brown rice. Let's turn off the heat. All right, turn off the heat, take the lid off. I'm going to get rid of the flame timer and show you it's nice and creamy. And if you eat it right now, nice and warm, you've got quite a bit of liquid. If you put this in the fridge, it will be um, a little thicker. You know, the liquid will the liquid will absorb more of the rice. But that's what it looks like. Looks okay. delicious. Thanks. Put the ginger in the palm of your hand and squeeze. I'm being echoed back again. And also half a cup of beautiful organic raisins, like so, and then mix it together. You can let the raisins sit in there for just um, a couple minutes to cook if you want. It depends, like I said, in, you know, 
Kathy and I discussed, you know, you could put them in there earlier if you want them softer, or if you want a little more texture, you put them in at the end, like so. Yum, 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 yum. So uh, that ginger that I showed you with those anti-inflammatory properties, um, I'm teaching a three weeks series on the three Saturdays in February that's healing with foods it's compresses, poultices, and teas. And I'm going to be using ginger in one of the classes with turmeric. I've got onions and garlic. So, I mean, it's just um, an extra special course. And I planned this course before I knew the bundle was coming out. So it kind of, the schedule kind of looped together. But anyways, people can check out that course on my website. That's three Saturdays in February where it's poultices and compresses and it's all about the healing benefits of food here is the rice pudding nice and creamy yeah marilyn says it looks yummy i think it looks delicious and i think that was great it was well well worth the wait for sure yeah can you hear me yeah okay and I'm not echoing, so that's good. Yeah, so get the bundle. I just can't even believe what a deal the bundle is. Hey, Kathy, you have air fryer um, spring rolls. Now, I haven't tried these yet, but I was looking at your recipes. You also have in the air fryer um, the tofu fingers, cornmeal battered tofu fingers. Those look, yeah, those sound delicious. I'm definitely going to check those out. Oh, I can't hear you, Kathy. I muted myself. Um, so it's definitely, it's really nice. It has a little bit of lemon, a little bit of seaweed. So it's kind of fishy, right? Sometimes people get a little there like, I don't want to eat food that tastes like something else. What does it taste like fish? It just gives the illusion. There's actually a word in Japanese that I forget. Um, umami. But, umami? No, it's about actually about no. invoking a memory, a food memory. So oh. it not being the barbecue I grew up with in North Carolina, but my mushroom or sweet potato barbecue, right? It invokes that memory and brings up all the flood of just yumminess, really, because I, and so that's another way to think about some of this stuff too. And like, I love taking rice pudding, which is I think everybody's comfort food from one place or another. And it's so simple to make it fit in with your eating plan now. Oh, and Susan has a great question for, and this is for me. Do you think if you blend it, meaning the rice pudding, that it would make some creamy ice cream? And she means in the Ninja Creamy, which is an appliance. I don't know if you've, we haven't talked about that before, but like basically you can put applesauce and some dates and make creamy spiced apple ice cream and i think this would work great because it has the bulk when we're doing something that's whole food plant-based no oil we have to make sure we have some extra fiber in there to not break the machine because you can't just put an ice cube in there right so yeah no i think that would be delicious um and diane says my favorite brown rice pudding i make it in the instant pot looks delicious thanks and have a wonderful day oh and mona is here saying hi to us and nice. let's see diane is also saying in northern california organic tofu soy milk company in the bay area and in san Francisco, sacramento so and she's also had some fresh tofu and soy milk that she really loves and if you guys make some soy milk at home and you're kind of like, this tastes a little strong, it tastes green-ish to me if I don't cook it a little bit longer. I don't know how else to explain it, but once I cook it for 10 minutes on high pressure in the Instant Pot, yes, you could do it on the stovetop for longer, for sure. I just take it out of one, strain it into the Instant Pot, and then I go away and who knows what I'm doing. I could take a walk, I could have some coffee, do whatever. Um, so, do you have anything else you want to say or share with everybody before we go for the day? Oh my God, so much. I love talking to you, Kathy. I don't know, this, you said invoking childhood memories. And so 
I make this macaroni and mochi that reminds me of my mom's macaroni and cheese. Because when I was a kid, that was actually one of the first recipes I ever learned how to do. And she would make the French roux with the butter and the, the flour and the milk, you know, and add the cheese. And she would make that. And so I was recently asked, like, I've been, you know, I have, I can't even count. I probably have 10,000 recipes. What's my favorite recipe or whatever. And this recipe I created like 20 years ago, it would have to be my macaroni and mochi. And I wanted to ask you, Kathy, what's your favorite recipe that you created? Oh gosh. It, it's hard. It's really it hard. You created a lot of recipes. And it goes back and forth. I think lately, cause I've been really into soy curls lately because soy curls are non-gmo soybeans that's the only ingredient they're cooked and smushed and extruded so they look mm -hmm. like tvp but they're more clean than tvp yeah. and so because i've been feeling a little bit lazy i throw that in the instant pot with some potatoes and carrots and sometimes some mushrooms some of my chickeny broth powder and then it makes like a chicken stew and so that, yeah, I've that had, I'm enjoying. Yeah, I've had the tofu curls before. I haven't usually utilized them, but they're delicious. So yeah, I wanted to thank you so much, Kathy, for having me cook with you. This has been so much fun. I really enjoyed it. Well, me too. And I really appreciate it very much that you came on the show. And you guys, if you haven't gotten the bundle yet, wherever you are, somewhere around in here. It's, the link to buy it is, is in there. Definitely at least click on the link, check it out, see if there's some stuff that's interesting to you. If you would go out for dinner, it's gonna cost you more than $49 now. It's, <laughs> inflation is real. <laughs> and, or if you would buy a couple of cookbooks. So I think you'll get a lot of information if you're gonna buy it or if you're not gonna buy it, either way, make sure to tune in to all the wonderful whole food plant-based people that are all over the web this week and come back and join me at six when we talk to someone who lives in an RV about meal planning. So we have wait, wait, no excuse. Are you talking to Kathy? Yeah. Oh, her, and, her and I are doing an Instagram live at um, three o'clock today. Oh, that'll be awesome. So you can catch her there too. I did yes. an Instagram live with her Friday, I think. The weekend's a blur. I don't know what happened. All I know is I wore my fuzzy nightgown all day in all three of my interviews. <laughs> well, that's, that's keeping it comfortable. And I'm doing a live stream on Restream with Kathy. Uh, I believe it's Tuesday, Tuesday at 2.30. If anybody wants to see me on Facebook, it's um, Valerie Wilson, Macro Val. Uh, you actually get more information on my personal page on Facebook than my business page, which is so disheartening. And Instagram is Chef Val underscore Macro Val. And uh, yeah, I, you know what I love to hear? I'm sure you do too, Kathy. After you teach how to make a recipe, if someone makes the recipe and then says, oh my God, it's delicious, or even better, they send you a picture. I don't know about you, but that just, you know, makes me so happy to see that someone made the recipe. They love it and what it turned out to be. Absolutely. And you guys, all those links, all of Val's links are down below too, or to the side, depending on where you are. So make sure to check her out, follow her, get some good recipes. If you make the brown rice pudding, post it, post it on Instagram, tag her, post it on Facebook and tag her. Um, I, and you can put it on the Heartbeat community too. I haven't really made a, a section for that, but you can email it to me and I will put it somewhere too. Kathy Huster at gmail.com. You guys hear that all the time. I am going to end this for today though. It has been such a pleasure, Chef Val, hanging out with you. My only regret is I do not have a bowl of brown rice pudding in front of me now, but I'll try not be too bratty about it. Actually, I'll try and make some myself is what I need to do. Because, like, I love eating stuff like that for breakfast in the summer. Or I'll make brown rice pudding and eat it for breakfast. It's just. Well, thank you so much, Kathy, and bless you. Thank you for having me on your show. Awesome. You guys have a great bundle week, and I'll see you very, very soon.